Okay, so welcome back. This is going to be our third and final screencast for chapter 13. And the focus for this screencast is going to be the idea of mutations. And so mutation is essentially when there's a mistake in the coding of that DNA sequence. Now, if you look down here, we have two examples of mutations. In this case, we have a frog that instead of having one, two, three, four legs, it actually has five six legs. Now that could be a result of a mutation of some sort during development. Now down here we have three examples of fruit flies and instead of having the normal eyed fruit fly we actually have three varieties. We have something called a sepia or an orange eyed fruit fly. We have a bar eyed fruit fly that you see right here so if you notice the eyes are a little bit of a different shape and then we have one called a wingless fruit fly. So instead of having the normal complement or two wings it actually has a couple of wings that are very, very significantly reduced. So they're very different from what you see here. All three of these are a result from a mutation that occurred in the DNA of that fruit fly. So it's a sort of a deviation from the normal. So that's what we're going to look at in 13.3. So before discussing the different types of mutations that are out there, let's make sure that we have a really good working understanding of what the definition for mutation is. Most of us understand that a mutation involves some sort of change, and it's a change in the DNA, in other words, that original genetic material that is stored safely in the nucleus. Now, please again make sure you know that these changes in the DNA are considered inherited or heritable changes. And so this would be the definition I would like you to use if you do have to define a mutation. Now we look at mutations in two categories. We look at those that occur possibly only involving maybe one or a few nucleotides. And to put that a little bit more simply, in other words, one or a few of those nitrogen bases that you would find on that DNA strand. The second type of mutation is going to be a chromosomal mutation, and those actually occur on larger segments of that chromosome. In other words, they can cause sometimes a lot more damage than you would find with mutations that only involve a few nucleotides. Now, when you talk about these mutations that only involve one or a few nucleotides, we typically call them point mutations, all right, because they only occur on a relatively small piece of that genetic material. Now we take those point mutations and we break them down into three primary types. We have a substitution, we have one called an insertion, and one called a deletion. Now the substitution is a relatively, could be a relatively minor mutation because it only replaces one nucleotide, which essentially means it only affects one of those amino acids being coded for in that DNA sequence. So if you look over here, we have an example of a substitution type of mutation. And before the mutation actually occurs, which is what you see right here, this right here is the normal DNA strand. It's what you see in black. And this right here is going to be that messenger RNA. Uh, it's kind of um, pushed together, but that's going to be the RNA strand we're going to code from that DNA. Now, Simple transcription, we go ahead and create the messenger RNA, and if you notice, the TAC is going to give us AUG, and that's going to be our start codon, and this is going to give us the sequence of amino acids that would be used to produce the normal protein. Now, if a substitution occurs, like you see right here, what we do is instead of having that, um, let's say C, so if you notice, we had TAC, GCA, so it should have been GCA, but we're going to substitute that C, so we're going to pull that out, and we're going to put in a T. Now, what's it going to do is it's actually going to screw up the sequence of amino acids that we have. So if you notice, we still start with methionine, so we still code for from AUG, the methionine amino acid. But instead of having arginine, which is what we had previously in the normal before the mutation occurred sequence, now when a substitution occurs, it changes that arginine to histidine, which is a different amino acid. Now the next two are going to be exactly the same because we didn't mess with those sequences. So threonine, threonine, uh, phenylalanine, and phenylalanine. Now of course, if you notice, this is going to code for a specific protein because of the sequence. This is now going to code for a different protein because we've introduced histidine in place of the arginine. So that's a substitution type of mutation. You substituted the C with a T in that original DNA. 
Now, when you talk about an insertion type of mutation, you're actually going to add a nucleotide to the sequence. So this is a little bit more different because what's happening is we're not pulling something out, we're simply adding something. So if you notice, the TAC, which you saw up here in the normal before mutation occurred sequence, is still there. So we have the methionine, we have that start codon. But in this case, we've added an A. So that GCA, which you saw up here before the mutation occurred, is still there. But because we have added the A, we read this in groups of three. So AUG gives us methionine. Now we have UCG that occurred after transcription as we read that messenger RNA. So what that does is it kind of shifts everything over um, to the right a bit. And these two, the insertion and the deletion, are considered frame shift. I'm going to write that down. They're considered frame shift mutations. Okay? Now they're frame shift mutations because they affect more than just one amino acid like you saw up here with substitution. Um, if you notice, now we read it UCG, which is going to give us serine. serine. We have UAC, which is tyrosine, and this one's going to give us leucine. Now that's definitely different from what we saw in the original, arginine, threonine, and phenylalanine. So this is going to cause a lot more damage to the protein that's going to result from that sequence of amino acids. So it's going to be very different from what you saw up here. Now deletion, again, is the same thing. We're not going to simply replace something. We're actually going to pull one of those nucleotides or those nitrogen bases out. So in this case, we're pulling the G out. So again, that shifts everything over to the left. So we still start with methionine. And if you notice now, we have two different amino acids being coded for. We have valine and proline, which before we had arginine and threonine. So that's definitely very different. But now we end up with two kind of lone nucleotides on the far right. There's not a third one here. Now without a third nucleotide, you can't code for an amino acid. So that definitely does a lot of damage to that sequence and definitely produces a protein that's very different from the original. So three types of point mutations, substitutions, insertions, and deletions. You need to be very familiar with all three. Now the second type of mutation is called a chromosomal mutation and the idea of what happens is kind of similar but in this case you are actually changing the number or it could be the structure of the chromosome. So what we're doing is we're working with larger chunks of genetic material. Now these mutations can change the location of the genes on the chromosomes which means things can be switched around and could even change the number of the copies of some of the genes. So what we have is we have four different types. We have deletion, duplication, inversion, and something called translocation. So we're going to start with our original chromosome towards the top. So this is the normal sequence. We're just going to simply use letters A, B, C, D, E, F. Now if you notice if we have a deletion, in other words what we're going to do is we're simply going to take out the B in this case. We end up with A, C, D, E, F. So we're deleting a part of that chromosome. In other words, we could be deleting a really important piece of what that particular chromosome codes for. And obviously that's going to cause problems. Um, down here for duplication, instead of taking the B out like we did with deletion, we're actually duplicating that B. So we have more chromosomal material than we're supposed to. Now as we had said before, sometimes it's not good to have more than you should, so we could have problems here as well. And inversion is when you take the original B and C again in that order, but what we're going to do is we're going to switch them around. So instead of being A, B, C, D, E, F, now it's A, C, B, D, E, F. And that can be just as bad. You can have some pretty significant problems there as well. Now translocation is going to be where you actually take a larger chunk of the material and you simply move it. In other words, the original chromosome was A, B, C, D, E, F, and in this case we're actually adding a chunk of chromosome maybe from another chromosome in that nucleus. So the G and the H weren't even there originally, and so now we're going to take that G and H, which came from someplace else, and insert it between the B and the C. Now again, that gives us a lot more chromosomal material and in this case, it gives us material that's not even supposed to be there. So definitely that can cause us problems as well. Now when you think about mutations, you also need to think about those things in the environment that actually might cause those mutations to occur. And we give a special name to those um, causes, and they're called mutagens. Now these mutagens can be chemical or they can be physical agents in the environment. 
Now, chemical mutagen would be something like a pesticide that, for example, you might spray on a crop or even on your lawn. Um, could be things like tobacco smoke. So for those people who smoke, for those people who chew, they're introducing a chemical type of mutagen into their body, which might influence their cells, might influence their genetic material. And again, it could be any other environmental pollutant that's not originally supposed to be out there that could adversely affect um, your cells. Now, physical mutagens would be things that aren't chemical in nature, but more physical. In other words, you're exposed to them. So electromagnetic radiation would be one of those, um, such as X-rays and ultraviolet light or UV rays. So if you are a person, for example, maybe you're an athlete and you've had repeated X-rays over and over again over many years, um, repeatedly exposing your cells to such X-rays could cause a change in that genetic material. And of course, if you, for example, if you like to tan, you're constantly influencing your cells with that UV radiation. And again, that can have an adverse effect um, on your cells as well. Up to this point, what we've done is we've kind of talked a lot about the negative or harmful effects of mutations, because there's definitely a lot of things out there that can be, um, be bad when it comes down to changing that genetic material. Now, of course, you know, things like cancer, for example, you see up here in the upper right, we have an example of skin cancer. That could be a result of some mutation in your cells, which causes them to, in this case, reproduce out of control and cause something pretty nasty. But we need to understand that there are mutations out there that can be very beneficial to the organism. Um, for example, um, there's mutations that are going to produce proteins that could be useful if the environment should happen to change. And so if you, for example, have a mutation that causes, for example, fur color, if that fur color changes in a way where it actually maybe allows the animal to blend in with its environment a little bit better, then that's going to be the organism that actually has a greater likelihood of surviving compared to the others. So in that case, that mutation was very beneficial. Now, there's also examples of mutations that have helped many insects to resist chemical pesticides. Now, for us, we would see that as being sort of a negative um, um, effect of, of the mutation, but you got to think of it from the viewpoint of the insect. In this case, the insect is able to survive because it has that special change in its DNA which allows it to resist the chemicals that we're trying to use to get rid of it. Um, microorganisms, for example, like bacteria, there's a lot of bacteria out there right now that have actually become um, antibiotic resistant, which means they have um, had mutations that have occurred within their genetic material that have allowed them to be resistant to the antibiotics that we try to use to make us feel better. Now, of course, we think of that in a negative way for us, but you got to think about it in terms of um, the bacteria. You know, they're trying to survive as well. And so in that case, for the bacteria, it, it's a good thing. It's a ben beneficial effect for them. All right, so that's going to finish up our third and final screencast for Chapter 13. Now, again, it's really important. Please make sure that you have completed your screencast notes before you come to class.